RGB versus component. Which one looks better? Well, take a look. What do you think? Look about the same to me. Um, I mean, this is pretty much what I expected coming into this, but uh, I was a little bit surprised with how hard it is to get a good comparison. Uh, like even here, you can see that the the RGB is a little brighter and the colors are maybe a little bit more washed out than the component. And that's because I think I have the brightness up a little bit higher on the RGB, probably too high because the component looks better. Um, there's so many variables. I came to the conclusion that any differences that you see in a comparison like this are due to the setup. Um, there was times when I was setting this up, I had to go back and like redo this numerous times. Like I would record it, I would record the RGB and then I would record the component and go, oh, they look different. The, the brightness is up too high or the contrast is up too high and go back and record it again. And I tried to get everything dialed in as close as I could. So like my camera, I, once I started recording, I left my camera in the exact same spot with the same focus, the same ISO. Um, I did it. I tried to do it all relatively quickly because I had it next to a window. I wanted the lighting to be the same. Like all of these variables are going to make it look different. And I think that's the only difference there is, is how you set it up. Like I've seen other people do comparisons and they're like, oh, well, the RGB looks sharper and the component looks brighter and the RGB is a little dimmer and sharper. Well, that's because they have the the contrast blasted. If you blast the contrast, um, or not blasted is the wrong word. If you turn the contrast up higher and you zoom in super close with the camera like this, where you can see all these details, you're gonna make it what you're gonna make it look less sharp because they'll be blooming. Even with RGB on a pro monitor like this, you're gonna get some blooming if you have your contrast all the way up. It'll look sharper if you turn that down. And I noticed going from RGB to component, um, the RGB, or excuse me, the component would be brighter and I would have to turn the brightness down or it would look whack. Like you can't just leave your dials the same. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Like, let me show you my setup so you have a better idea of, uh, you know, what we're doing here. All right, guys, so this is my test setup here. This is an Olympus OEV203, um, same as a PVM20 M2 MDU. And it will take RGB and component and you just flip a switch. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, I got a PlayStation 2 hooked up down there. And it as well will output RGB or component. So all of my testing is going through the same monitor. In fact, the same inputs on the back of the monitor. Through the same cord, through the same console, that PS2. And I got a HD loader in there and a free McBoot and... We're going to be using 240p games, uh, probably Mega Man, to test with so we can get sharp scan lines. And um, yeah, what else to point out here? Oh, I use a. So I calibrated my screen here. Um, I had this professionally recalibrated and uh, recapped by Savon Pat. And the colors on it, I checked. The white balance is excellent, it's spot on on it. This monitor has extremely low hours to begin with and I uh, I did a color calibration for RGB and then I recorded my RGB and then I went and color calibrated my component and recorded my component um, and I did notice I had to change some settings some brightness and contrast settings between RGB and component um, otherwise my component video would have been too bright and too blown out if I would have used the same settings for RGB I mean, that's what these dials on the front are for, guys. So to calibrate it, the color calibrated, I just threw this up and did a color calibration. I have a video on that. And uh, another video, I have another video on that you can check out if you want to know how to color calibrate. I'm not going to go into that here. But yeah, I mean, so the menu here, like if you pull up the menu, you go into config. Chroma, RGB, and you can tell it, you know, whether you want it to do RGB or component. So, 
yeah so I just switch between that and then uh, let me flip around to the back here so here we are plugged in on the back I don't know if you can see down there it says uh, RGB or component there's your RGB or component video. They go into the same slots because they're very similar signals. And this cable is really cool. It will do RGB or component. And when you do RGB, it sends the sync through the composite line here. And uh, that'll do external sync. Yeah, not much else to say. Okay, like I was saying earlier, I had to adjust my knobs in between recording RGB and component. Um, I guess before I get into that, I wanted to mention like that I had my, my camera, like I calibrated the white balance on my camera so that it matched my pro monitor. And I left that like set, like all the manual settings on the camera, I set everything to manual so that it wouldn't like auto adjust and change anything. So the focus, the ISO, um, the white balance, I think that's it. All of that was like um, the frame rate that was all like set and locked in so it wouldn't change. And the white balance was calibrated on my camera um, as good as it could get. Oh, and I'm using an iPhone camera, which records quite well uh, CRTs. It does a good job. So, yeah, so I got my camera dialed in and then I got my RGB dialed in was the first thing I did. And I pulled up my, my blue screen with my SMPTE color bars, calibrated the color, the brightness and the contrast recorded. And then I switched over to component to do my component recordings and noticed right away it was too bright. Um, and before I recorded anything, I went and calibrated it again. So in the process of calibrating it, you know, I had to change the color and the hue. Um, so I had to change dials. The dials are changing in between these recordings and you have to do that. I mean, that's why you get a broadcast monitor. They got dials on them guys. That's because in editing and broadcasting in between sources, you need to adjust the image so that the image is correct. You don't, you, you it's not like the dials are like, there's a right spot for them to be across all all video sources you need to change that stuff so it needs to be calibrated to the image not you know set to like what you think the dial needs to be at like oh i recorded all the dials in this spot for rgb so they need to be in the same spot for component no i mean ideally what you would do is have a probe and like for this kind of testing like if you wanted to do it exact you you need to use a probe and make sure like the color and the brightness and the blue is all at the same knit. Like it's all the exact same. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get it perfect. Like I kept going back and trying to get the image perfect, but I did the best I could. And like I said, it to me, it just looks like, like any differences you're going to notice is really just differences on not having your screen calibrated, which to me just reinforces how important it is to like do a color calibration on your screen. Um, yeah, what else to say here? Um, yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about how RGB is like, got this like special, like it's considered better than component. Like it's looked at differently than component in North America. And I was thinking about this and, uh, I did a little thought experiment. I was thinking like, imagine like in a Mandela effect, like you're in a different universe where everything's the same you know, except in this universe or world or whatever, um, our, our component video isn't called component. It's called HR video. And instead of RCA plugs on the back, it uses a SCART on the back, kind of like in Japan, how they have JP21, you know. Um, and you could do that. You can have a component go through SCART. There's no reason you couldn't. I'm thinking if that was the case, if in like the late 90s, if component video came out and it was called something better than YPV PR, it was something cool like HR video and it had a badass SCART input on the back that didn't look like composite, I think people would be looking at it very differently. They would be thinking now like people wouldn't be thinking, oh, we need RGB. We'd be thinking, oh yeah, we got HR video over here. And it would be cool because it's got the SCART. Like one problem is 
you look on the back of a TV and you got three things for composite and you got three for component. So like it, that connotation, like it just, the, the three prongs of RCA just gets mixed up with composite and people think, oh, that's crap. And then the name, YPBPR, like nobody's making t-shirts called, you know, YPBPR. It's like RGB is cool, right? Like you can find a t-shirt with that, but nobody's bragging about YPBPR. It just, the marketing there isn't very good. So there's that going on. I think got people going the wrong way with component. And then uh, another thing I noticed is there's just like this collecting type of thing with RGB, like the collecting atmosphere has, has got into the, the monitors here. And I noticed this when I was making my other video I made a little while ago um, about how to get RGB into your North American CRT, you know, using a RGB to component transcoder. When I was researching that video, I saw online a bunch of videos where guys were modding their component TVs in North America, like JVCD series that have component and they were modifying them to have RGB. And I was like, what's going on here? And I saw quite a few videos like this. And I go into the comment sections on these videos and guys were just eating this up, talking about, oh, this is so great. I wish more people were doing this. And, oh, you know, it was all very positive. And I was, and I'm waiting. Nobody asked the question, why did you do this when your TV has a comp component? Why don't you just get a transcoder? So I would put that question in the comments. And um, I did that on several videos and only one video did someone get back to me. Um, and then the rest of them, no one did. And there'd be like a hundred upvotes for somebody that says, yeah, RGB is king. So that gets a hundred upvotes. So obviously people agree with that. And then I ask like the most obvious question I think should be asked in that video, which is why are you RGB modifying a TV that has component and nobody crickets, no one wants to talk about it. And I'm thinking, okay, what's going on here? Like, this isn't about gaming because gaming wise, like you would just use component. Like if you're really interested in the RGB, it's for something else besides gaming. And I think it's the prestige. It's like the coll collectors want the rare thing and RGB is rare. And they also want the prestigious thing, you know, like pro monitors are prestigious. They're hard to find. They're expensive. You know, it's like, video games like nintendo games like people want panic restaurant nobody wants panic restaurant to play it they want it for the prestige because it's rare and it's uncommon game you know so they want the uncommon rare thing so that's just more more uh, evidence that the com the collecting part of retro gaming is taking over like it's more popular people are more interested in rgb monitors to put them in their game room and never play them and say i got an rgb monitor or if they can't find one, then they're going to get an, a TV RGB modified, even if it has a component, just so they can say they have RGB for the for the prestige. Just like someone saying, oh, I got Panic Restaurant. They just want to say it and show it off. They don't actually want to play it. And I know this, um, and uh, I would say for a fact, but I shouldn't say that, but um, I got more evidence to reinforce this position. And that's because I was selling CRTs for a while. I had a website on Craigslist. I was picking up CRTs, uh, refurbishing, calibrating them for people and selling them. And <laughs> didn't do very well, by the way. But uh, all these guys would call me up and I would say like, out, I only got like nine phone calls, nine interested people. And only one of them was like a gamer. All the other eight people that called, it was the same story. They're like, oh, I want an RGB monitor and I'm going to put it in my game room and I'm, I'm putting together this game room right now. And like, I'm a serious gamer. So I hit them up like, oh, what games are you playing? And all of them said, oh, I don't have time to game right now, but hopefully in like a year or two, I'll have time to game, but I'm putting my game room together. So there's lots of people are collecting. They're just collecting these monitors. Like the majority, I think, is just not really using them very much. So People that are in that collecting mindset, they want the prestigious thing, not necessarily the functional thing. They want the thing that sounds cool, like RGB, you know, and YPBPR, man, that's just not doing it for them. But hey, I'm going a, I'm to a throw up like some composite versus, com, uh, excuse me, composite versus RGB at the end here and, you know, check that out. And, you know, that, that 
like there's a difference there. You want to see some a signal that looks different. Yeah, composite definitely looks different. But uh, yeah, I mean, go out there and uh, beat you some hard games for me, guys.